Apple just announced the brand new Mac Studio, a device that's basically a Mac Mini, but ultra-sized and better in almost every single way, and I bought the cheapest version of it. Before you raise your eyebrow at that sentence, I still love the M1 Mac Mini. No kidding, this is the best value desktop computer that you can buy, period. And that's even now, to this day, that's still the case. But it does have some limitations, and it looks like Apple has addressed every single one of them. It's like they watched one of my videos and they're like, okay, here's all the problems that Gary had with the Mac mini. Let's fix every single one of them with this monster little computer. And it is for the power you get. It's a pretty little computer. Let's first talk about what the Mac studio even is. It's specs, it's pricing, and maybe even a partridge in a pear tree. The Mac studio can be had in a base configuration with the M1 Max processor. This model will come in at $19.99. For that money, you'll get the 10 core M1 Max processor with 24 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of unified memory and a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. The only weakness of this spec in my opinion, and I do believe this is the best spec to get, 512 is kind of low, but there is so much IO built into that brand new computer that setting up some kind of external storage solution shouldn't be that hard or that expensive. On the other hand, you can take that Mac Studio all the way up to a powerhouse, the likes of which we've never seen before in the M1 world with the new M1 Ultra processor. And honestly, I didn't realize that Apple had contracted the product naming conventions from my nine-year-old because Pro, Max, and Ultra are definitely what he would call something's power levels. You can get that Ultra in up to a 20-core CPU, 64-core GPU, 120 gigabytes of unified memory, and an 8-terabyte solid-state drive, all for a grand total of... Don't tell me. I don't... We're just going to overlay it here because I don't want to see it. I don't want to say. Okay, I, I, I peaked. I peeked and I looked, $7,999, holy crap. I thought the maxed out MacBook Pro 16 was expensive, but whew, that legitimately hurt to say. But if we're being honest with each other, that maxed out version of the Max Ultra, I'm, I love this new naming convention, Apple. That computer isn't really aimed at me or probably at most of you because you're watching this video. I think the base model 1999 computer is a fantastic deal. It's not cheap. Obviously $2,000 is not cheap, but for what you get, it's probably right up there with the M1 Mac mini, but just it's for somebody that needs more oomph. When it comes to the limitation of previous Macs that the studio fixes, we can start by looking at some of the overall features. For all its ingenuity and disruptiveness to the marketplace, the Mac mini had some very weird problems for a desktop computer. One, it can only go up to 16 gigabytes of unified memory. Now that's fine for the majority of us, including myself, and I am a fairly prolific content creator that processes a ton of 4K 10-bit video files every week, but there are absolutely workflows that need more. Some, in fact, need up to 128 gigabytes of that stuff. So having all that addressed here really eases up and frees the studio. Because these are more enterprise-type devices, it frees them up to be able to run practically anything from virtual machines to major VFX projects to multiple streams of 8K video. The second problem with the Mac Mini was in its I.O., which is only a problem in hindsight because before this, the M1 Mac Mini had the most I.O., but a limitation of the M1 processor itself was you could only do one external 6K display from the Thunderbolt port. You could supplement that with a 4K display from the HDMI, but for me, that wasn't a great solution. The Mac Studio gives you up to four 6K displays out from its Thunderbolt 4 ports, and you also, thanks Apple, you get that additional 4K display from HDMI if you really need it. Plus, here, you'll get I.O. on the front panel of the computer as well, because if you'll see on the Mac Mini, there's nothing here, so you needed to plug in some kind of a dongle or a hub to get your SD cards plugged in. And yes, I'm a YouTuber, we have to mention if a computer has SD card slot. If we don't, YouTube itself, like the physical representation of YouTube, will come to my house and it'll make me redo this entire video. I don't make those rules, I just have to live by them. SD cards. The Mac Studio has it. The major differences between the processors when it comes to the I.O. is on that front panel. If you have the Ultra, those will be Thunderbolt ports, and if you get the Max version, those will be USB-C. If we're talking about in the realm of processor differences between other versions of the M1 chip in other computers, that's not a big deal. The third problem with the Mac Mini was its overall power. And I know when you start talking power and numbers, people get all crazy. No, I never personally had a problem with the power on hand for any of the M1 processors. This is one of my favorite computers of all time. But there are a ton of other chipsets on the market today that do have more oomph, and sometimes you need more oomph. And I think putting an M1 Max in this 
cheapest version is super smart and it's an incredible step up for those of us that make money directly with your time spent like waiting on a process. It seems like it have such a small effect, but as we saw in my own benchmark with my MacBook Pro 16 with its M1 Max processor, there is a huge difference between these styles of CPUs and I think there is enough of a difference to pay for it. I probably would not have said the same thing if they put the M1 Pro processor in here for $19.99, so thankfully they didn't. That tells us why the Mac Studio might be okay, I guess, but why did you order the cheapest model? Well, basically because it has that M1 Max processor. That thing is nuts. It's easily one of the most powerful chips that I've ever used in my life. And I say that as somebody that typed this script using a PC with a 16 core Ryzen 5950X. Think about it. If you wanted to get a computer with the M1 Max before this option, your cheapest version was to go with a variant of the MacBook Pro 14 and that computer with, with the same 32 gigabytes of memory and 512 gigabytes of storage, that comes in at $28.99 almost a thousand dollars more expensive to have a built-in monitor. Now, I'm only being slightly facetious here because yes, if you need a laptop, well then yeah, you probably need the computer with that built-in monitor. But personally, when I'm using a laptop as my main computer, it spends most of its life in clamshell mode right next to my monitor. So essentially, and we can actually break this down now with actual dollars because we can see the difference, I pay a thousand dollar premium for a screen that I don't really use. Plus, while the new MacBook Pros are incredibly well thermally managed, the only time I've heard reports of issues is with that M1 Max processor inside of the MacBook Pro 14. Here in the Mac Studio, it's like, Half of that computer is the thermal system. That's not even a joke. Did you see the internals from the keynote? Half of the shell is taken up with the computer and the other half is taken up with some comparatively gigantic fans. Yes, obviously the most serious of the thermal system is reserved for that M1 Ultra variant. And you notice that M1 Ultra variant is about two pounds heavier. Two pounds is a lot of fan power team. But if you want a home computer with all that power, that's the best value to get there. Seriously, during the Apple event, I was pretty lukewarm idea on the idea of the Mac Studio because it seemed to be a desktop version of a computer that I already had. But team, the more I think about it, the more excited I'm getting because you're gonna get some real power. Not for an actually cheap price, but I think for a very reasonable price. When we start talking about pro-level Apple computers, even like three or four years ago, I leased an iMac Pro, and that iMac Pro was five grand. Just the base model, five grand. Look at what we get now for $2,000. It's, I... I'm very excited about it. Plus, we already talked about some of the I.O. on the front being good, but let's talk about the I.O. on the back, because it's real good. You get four Thunderbolt 4 ports, a standard 10 gigabit Ethernet port, two USB-A ports, and yes, whew, USB-A is relevant, and I'll fight on this hill every single day of the week. One HDMI and one high quality audio port, which the rest of the world, we just call 3.5 millimeter audio jacks. What else could you need for inputs? Maybe DisplayPort, but the Thunderbolt to DisplayPort cables aren't that expensive. Maybe you could use some more USB-A, but Thunderbolt is so versatile that you can essentially dongle it into anything. You could dongle each of those ports to give you almost unlimited ports. All the ports for everybody, it's, it's Portsmouth. It is Portsmouth, everybody gets them all. We get all that, but honestly, I'll probably only use the one port to plug into the monitor and that'll be it. I'll use the front SD card slot and the front USB-C port for the off chance I need to plug in a solid state drive and boom, it's so nice to be back on the side of having too many options for inputs instead of the old Apple, and I'm willing to call three or four years ago old Apple now, the old Apple mantra of, hey, let's just give them two USB-C ports and let them figure it out themselves. If we were looking at places to upgrade this machine, obviously the real place to go is storage. 512 gigabytes, it's kind of rough. And I guess one of the problems that Apple haters are gonna have here is they can't use their standard, well, it's called a pro, so how can a pro device not have X feature that I wanna have but would never buy it anyway? Oh, that was weird, why did I? Why did I type that? So it's not called a pro, it's called a studio. That's that's the whole joke. But another joke is 512 gigabytes of storage for something with a processor this powerful. Snap, we got two burns in like two sentences. If you have the money, I would recommend upgrading to at least a one terabyte solid state drive, and that will cost you $200. And I wanna get upset about this price, but honestly, it's pretty consistent with the rest of the high-end memory marketplace. If you look at the Samsung Evo 980 Pro, that retails for 220 bucks, and the high-end Gen 4 one terabyte solid state drive from Aorus also retails for 220 bucks. So while Apple does charge a premium for certain storage and memory configurations, I think that money is well spent and it's very comparable to the competition. My biggest complaint would be, 
I wish there was a way that we could easily upgrade these ourselves, especially when we start getting into the higher end desktop Macs. I personally think there should be a pretty easy way to pop the top off of this, snap in a couple of M.2 drives, and absolutely just be able to do this on our own. It's so easy to do it on my PC. I really hope Apple starts to take the whole right to repair and upgrade thing seriously. I think upgrading the unified memory isn't worth it. And if you need it, you already know you need it. And you probably aren't watching a video where somebody talks about buying the cheapest version of said computer. And definitely don't worry about 120 gigabytes. I'm sure somebody out there needs it, but that's like running intensive programs inside of other intensive programs level of memory that this video that you are watching is in no way, shape or form certified to discuss. Discuss. As for the processor, I wouldn't recommend upgrading it at all. The 10 core M1 Max is pretty darn good in either of its configuration. And that 20 core Ultra for 1400 bucks is so far outside the realm of even what, like even the highest end online content creator, that's just not worth it. You've gotta be real careful to not fall into the core count trap now that everything has to be 12 or 16 or 20 cores these days. We had a gigahertz trap, what, like 10 years ago. Now we're in a core count trap. Even the Threadripper, which might not be a thing much longer, and it's crazy 32 cores and up, that's just not worth buying. Cores absolutely have diminishing returns. And even on my 16 core desktop computer, I guarantee that I only use them for the 10 minutes every other day that I have to render out these videos. I would not upgrade that M1 Max processor unless I had a business that specifically needed it. And no, YouTubers are just not in that business. Unless again, you're building lots of very complex virtual machines. Let's say you don't need any of those cool things that I talked about that fixes stuff found in the M1 Mac mini. Well then, heck, you can just stick with the M1 Mac mini. I have and still love mine, and it's absolutely to this day the best value computer ever made. And if you like this video and you want to see what I think about that M1 processor, but inside the iPad Air, you can find my video talking about it by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.